Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about continuity and how I can identify different types of discontinuities. So I'm going to start right off with an example. Find the domain and identify all types of discontinuities, including, if they exist, equations of asymptotes and coordinates of holes. So first off, let's look at that domain piece. When finding the domain of a function, if I look at f of x here, I have x minus 1 over x squared plus x. The only values that I'm going to have to exclude from my domain is when this denominator is equal to 0. So I'm first going to set x squared plus x, that denominator, equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for x. So if I pull out an x, I'm left with x plus 1. So I get x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. These are the two values that I'm going to need to exclude from my domain. So the domain of this function is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, not including negative 1, negative 1 to 0, not including 0, and 0 to infinity. Now, since x equals negative 1 and x equals 0 are not included in my domain, that means that something's going on at those two values, some type of discontinuity. When I look at this original function, I'm just going to plug in the factored form. So I have x minus 1 over x times x plus 1. Since these two factors in the denominator do not cancel with anything in the numerator, that tells me that these two factors give me vertical asymptotes. So where x is equal to 0 and where x is equal to negative 1, we have vertical asymptotes. Those are the two types of discontinuities for this function. Number two, find the domain and identify all types of discontinuities, including if they exist, equations of asymptotes and coordinates of holes. So first, for the domain, I know that since this denominator is going to be equal to 0 when x is equal to 2, that means that my domain is going to have to exclude 2. So my domain will be negative infinity to 2, not including 2, and 2 to infinity, also not including 2. I'm now going to factor my function's numerator so that I have x plus 2, x minus 2, and then that denominator just stays x minus 2. In the previous example, nothing in my denominator canceled with anything in the numerator. So those factors that didn't cancel gave me vertical asymptotes. However, in this example, I see that a factor in the numerator cancels with a factor in the denominator. When I have a factor that cancels, I have a removable discontinuity at that x value. So I'm going to set that factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So I know at x equals 2, there is a removable discontinuity or a hole. In order to find the coordinate of the hole, I plug the x value into what's left over in my function after I've canceled out those factors. So what I have left in f of x was just x plus 2 in the numerator. So I plug in the value from the hole into that numerator, and I get 4. So that means that the coordinates of the hole are 2, 4. Number three, I have the same direction, so the first thing I'm going to look for is domain. They're defining my domain here in this piecewise function as x is less than or equal to 1 and x is greater than 1. So I know that they have defined every x value for me. I just need to check that these functions will also give us a y value out for all of those x's. I know that x squared plus 2 is just a parabola. That's a polynomial, so that's continuous. And this is just the line y equals 4, so that's continuous as well. So separately, these pieces are going to hit all of my domain values. So my domain here is just going to be negative infinity to infinity or all reals. Every single x value will give me out some kind of y value. The next thing that I need to check for are any types of discontinuities. With a piecewise function, the only thing that I'm really concerned about is a jump discontinuity. So if my function's jumping from one y value to another. I'm going to just sketch this out so we get an idea of what's going on. I'm going to plug 1 in for x first. So 1 squared is 1 plus 2 gives me 3. So I know that I'm going to start at 1, 3, and that's going to be a closed circle. I'm graphing x squared plus 2 for numbers less than 1. So if I plug in 0 next, I get 2. If I plug negative 1 in next, I get negative 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. I'm back up at 3 again. So now I can see that this parabola's vertex is here and is curving back up. So I'm just going to sketch that in. 
And now I'm going to sketch the second part of my piecewise function. So at x equals 1, I'm at the y value 4, and that's an open circle, and then it's just a straight line. Now that this thing is graphed, I can see that I have a jump discontinuity at x equals 1 because these two y values are not equal to each other. We do not have to graph the piecewise function every time. What I really could have done is once I checked that the first piece and the second piece of the function were continuous independently, I would then really just have to check that the y values at these x spots were equal to one another. So I could have right away just plugged one in for x and gotten three and known that this y value was four. So right away I can see that there's a jump discontinuity because this function is ending at three and then this function is ending or starting at four. So for my jump discontinuity, the only time I'm really looking for a jump is if there is a piecewise function. So just to wrap this up, let's just go over those three types of discontinuities and how to find them. The first one we talked about was an infinite discontinuity. This is also a vertical asymptote. So to find the vertical asymptote, you're going to factor the numerator and denominator of the function and then set the leftover factors, so whatever factors didn't cancel, set those factors in the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Those x values give you your vertical asymptotes. The second type of discontinuity that we talked about is a removable discontinuity or a hole. In order to find the x coordinate of the hole, you first factor the numerator and denominator, and then the factors that cancel set those equal to zero and solve. That'll give you the x coordinates of the hole. To find the coordinates of the hole, you can then plug the x value in from step two into the expression that is left after canceling. The third and final type of discontinuity is a jump discontinuity. These are really only going to occur in piecewise functions. And here you really just have to check that the y values are equal to each other whenever the function is changing from one piece to another piece. Let's do one last example. Given f of x is x minus 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 3, identify all types of discontinuities. The first thing I'm going to do is factor the numerator and the denominator of this function. x minus 1 can't be factored, so I'm just going to leave that. And the denominator can factor to x minus 3 and x minus 1. Since this was not a piecewise function, I know that it's not going to have a jump discontinuity. The only types of discontinuities that I'm looking for are either removable or infinite. So now that I have this thing factored, I see that the x minus 1 in the numerator cancels with the x minus 1 in the denominator. When factors cancel, that tells me that there's a removable discontinuity or a hole where that factor is equal to 0, so where x minus 1 equals 0. So if I solve that for x, I get x equals 1. So at x equals 1, there is a removable discontinuity. To find the coordinates of this hole, I then plug this x value into what's left over after I've canceled in the function. So in that function, once I've canceled, I'm left with 1 over x minus 3. So if I plug 1 in for x, I have 1 over 1 minus 3, so that's going to be negative 1 half. So the coordinates of my hole are at x equals 1 and y equals negative 1 half, so 1 negative 1 half. This other factor, the x minus 3, that's a factor that's left over once I've canceled. Where that factor is equal to 0, I can solve for x, and this x value gives me an infinite discontinuity or a vertical asymptote. So this function has two types of discontinuities, a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 and a hole that's appearing at 1, negative 1 half. That's it for identifying types of discontinuities algebraically. If you are not one of my students and would like a copy of this worksheet, you can send us an email that I'll leave in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Hope you all have a great day.